My friends, welcome back to episode number three of the rock and metal cover song tier list. We will be ranking the very best and, of course, the very worst metal cover songs today in episode number three. I know it's been so long since we did episode number two, isn't it? It's been so long. It's just coincidentally... Isn't it crazy that I wore the same shirt and hat as I did in the second episode? Like, what are the odds that I wore the exact same outfit that I did last time? Crazy. What a wild world. What a strange coincidence. Anyway, let's get into it. And really quickly, I also wanted to mention my Patreon. If you like what I do on YouTube and everywhere else, joining my Patreon really helps me do this full time and worry less about videos getting demonetized by YouTube or copyright claimed by labels. Patrons get all my podcasts and main channel videos early. There are members only channels in my discord that I'm super active in. I also do giveaways. For example, I've been giving away a lot of emos, not dead merch, and you can also have me review your music, artwork, or anything else. All you need to do is join my Patreon at the $10 level. And then every month I do a call for submissions. If you want me to review something, just drop it in the comments of that post, and then I will review it live on Twitch. So if any of that sounds cool to you, hit the link in the description of this video and I appreciate your support. Let's start with an underrated classic. This is Korn covering one by Metallica from the MTV Icon show. This is maybe back in like 2003 or something like that. They had this series called MTV Icon where they would basically have a bunch of different bands get together and play a tribute show to a band. And I don't remember who else they did. The only one I remember is uh, this Metallica one. This is Korn covering one by Metallica, which is one of Metallica's really Dave best songs. Welcome. Lincoln Park's Chester Bennington and Blink-182's Travis Barker. Wait, you're not in Korn. I'm confused. You know, uh... And uh, this one's interesting because this is one of the, you know, when Metallica was still a thrash band and there's a lot of really tight stuff in here. Korn is not like a tight, precise band. You know what I mean? They're more of like a groove band. So I was wondering, would they be able to pull this off? Like, can they do that kind of like very precise sort of syncopated stuff that Metallica was doing on this song during this era of the band? Because it's kind of the opposite of, of the Korn feel. And the vocals, completely different too. It sounds great with uh, with Fieldy's bass too, because I know it's kind of a cliche, but one of the like disappointing parts of uh, And Justice For All is that there's no bass guitar on it. And it sounds awesome to hear this song with the actual bass on it. Jonathan sounds awesome. But it still sounds like corn. You know? And then, of course, there's the breakdown at the end. David, a much better drummer than Lars. David on the worst day is better than Lars on his best day. This part sounds amazing. It sounds super cool, right? I mean, to me, this is like the best thing you could possibly get if you were to combine Korn and Metallica which seems like something that on paper would be a good idea, but in practice, I feel like, you know, most likely it would be shitty. But in fact, it turns out it's amazing. I wish they would have recorded this because I think a studio version of this would have been really cool. I will say that uh, I think this is like one of the cooler covers of all time, in my personal opinion. I think it's super cool. It is so cool, in fact. I feel like it should build anticipation by saving the best for last or something like that. But fuck it. We're doing it live. I'm going to put this on the S tier. I think it's that good. I think they nailed it. Super cool. Um, came out way better than it had any business being. You know what I mean? Always a nice surprise. Oh, a studio version exists, but it's never come out. You got to leak it, buddy. You got to leak it. You got to steal it out of their safe, out of Jonathan's safe and uh, leak that shit. Destroy your career <laughs> for the sake of impressing strangers on the internet. It's good, not great. No way. I think it is absolutely great. B tier, you're crazy. You people calling this A and B tier, you're crazy. Cr out of your mind. You are crazier than the guy in the cold chamber video. The, the crazy ice cream truck driver. You're crazier than that guy. Out of your mind, people. You're out of your mind. That's what I think. Next, we have Oi to the World by No Doubt, originally by the Vandals. <laughs> A lot of people don't know this is a cover also. I love No Doubt. I love the Vandals. 
love it. It's true. I like a ska song. I know. Don't don't tell anybody. I like a ska song. I think this one sounds great. Um, the Vandals are one of my favorite punk bands of all time. I think everyone would agree that uh, Dave Quackenbush from the Vandals, not the world's best vocalist and uh, definitely not as good looking as Gwen Stefani. Adrian from No Doubt played in the Vandals as well. So to me, this basically just sounds like the Vandals, but with a uh, much more pleasant vocalist. Cool video too, in India. This part's nice. See, I don't hate ska, I love No Doubt. Do I think that is the best song in the world? Eh, I don't know if I would say that. I, I, think it's, I think it's very good, calling it great. I don't know if I could go that far. I would say that's like, you know, in baseball terms, that's a solid double, I would say, right? Not a home run, but it's not a strikeout. It's good, you know, a solid double. Go okay, nothing wrong with that. Got you to second base. A solid beater. That's where I'll put it. Next, we have another Metallica cover. Nickelback covering Sad But True. Now, you might think, Nickelback, a terrible band. What do they know about metal? How could Nickelback possibly do justice to one of the very best Metallica songs? This is going to be terrible. We're all going to laugh at Nickelback face planting when they try to cover Metallica, right? Right? This is going to be terrible, right? Oh no, my friends. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Possibly better than the original. And I love this song. This is my favorite Metallica song by far. And this sounds fucking amazing. Like, legitimately fucking amazing. I like how dorky, just the absolute complete lack of swag. You know, Chad standing up here in his, like, tight black t-shirt with his, like, flared black pants it looks like he stole them from a member of hansen just complete lack of swag it's great he knows what's coming like okay well the music sounds pretty good but there's no way once the vocals start it's gonna sound like corny ass butt rock right there's no way that chad kroger can pull the vocals off no way this is gonna be terrible right Whoa, what Sounds arguably better than James. I think it sounds incredible. And it's live also. I think it sounds fucking great. Now, obviously, uh, they're not doing anything, you know, creative, not taking any chances. It's a completely straight cover. So I don't think we can give them too much credit for doing anything particularly creatively challenging with it. But you got to give them credit for just doing a damn good cover of a great song, right? So I'm going to put that on the A tier. Much better than it should be. That's what I think. Horrible font. The, like this logo, I remember I used to love this font when I discovered it in Microsoft Word in like 1994. I loved this font because it reminded me of like Dick Tracy or something like that. Why did they choose that? They're like, hey, let's use the font that Finn McKenty used for like his school play in seventh grade, let's use that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, they're not taking any chances with it, but it's a damn good cover, I think. So I'm giving it an A. A somewhat obscure one by Newfound Glory. They have two albums of covers of songs from movies. This is a song from a movie called That Thing You Do about like a, a, a fake like British invasion band from the 60s or whatever. I think, I don't remember. But uh, anyway, it's a cover of a song from that movie. And uh, it's actually one of my favorite Newfound Glory songs because they just turned it into like a really cool pop punk song. An underrated Newfound Glory song. Love that drum sound too. Very 90s. Oh, Tom Hanks directed that. I didn't know that. Kind of an obscure one, um, but uh, I really like it. An underrated Newfound Glory album that uh, a lot of people don't remember. I would say maybe kind of on the same category as... Uh, as no doubt, you know, I don't think they're going to win any awards for that song or anything, but it's a, again, a solid, a solid double. I like that in baseball. You know, I like playing small ball. We don't have to swing for the fences. Just get on base and by get on base. I mean, second base, which, uh, back when I was a kid, second base meant feeling the booby 
um, above the shirt. That's what it meant for us. First base was kissing. Second base was feeling the booby above the shirt. Third base was feeling the booby below the shirt. And a home run was finger blasting, I think. I think those butt stuff, butt stuff didn't exist when I was... When I was like that age, there was there was no butt stuff. Yeah. Nowadays, second base is eating ass. It's true. I don't make the rules. I'm just saying when I was a kid, second base was feeling the booby above the shirt. Because when I was a kid, you know, you might have to have a girlfriend for like months before she would let you feel the booby below the shirt. You really had to work your way up to that. But now, you know, they just eat ass on the first date, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. That's my understanding about the way they do it these days. Okay, next up, Wicked Game by Him. This is a cover of uh, the song by Chris Isaac. Do you guys know the original from, I don't know, back in like 1991 or something like that? Great song. Incredible song. Great video. Devastatingly handsome man, also. I have a Chris Isaac tattoo. His song Forever Blue. I have a, a Chris Isaac tattoo. Not, I mean, not his face. <laughs> I wish I had Chris Isaac's face um, tattooed on my body. I just have the name of his song Forever Blue tattooed on my ribs and it hurt very bad. So I love this song very much. And so I was excited to hear him cover it because I thought, oh, well, him is kind of a sexy metal band. Maybe they'll do a good cover of it. Uh, unfortunately, not so much. This looks like a joke, doesn't it? It looks like an SNL skit of like some fake metal band, you know, from Scandinavia. Not good at all. Sounds like a local band covering this song. I mean, this is horrible. Horrible. The video looks like a joke. Awful. Just absolutely awful. Unfortunately. What'd you do to my boy? You murdered my boy. What did you do? Kim does have one of the best logos of all time, doesn't it? What a fucking great logo how many 2000s moms have this tattooed you know currently obscured by their c-section scar how many 32 year olds with like uh two kids out of wedlock have this logo tattooed on their body somewhere not a small number that's what i think the tramp stamp that's right you gotta find yourself a girl with a him tramp stamp i'm gonna put this song on the f tier i'm sorry i like him but this is an atrocious cover of a great song Absolutely unacceptable. It's on the F tier. I'm sorry, boys. You murdered it. You murdered my boy. I won't have it. Okay, next we have uh, another one of my absolute favorite bands of all time. Not ironically, not ironically, Hand to God, 311 is one of my favorite bands of all time. This is a cover of uh, The Cure's Love Song, which was one of their biggest hits, I think, from, I don't know, early 2000s at some point. The song was in 50 First Dates. Okay. Great movie. One of my favorite drummers of all time, too. One of the best snares of all time. Every seaside bar in South Florida was never the same after this drop. See, that's what I aspire to. I aspire to be the type of person, you know, that somehow is at the seaside bar, you know, in, uh, in Tampa. Every weeknight, you know, they close out the bar. And you wonder, like, what does that guy do for work? You know, how is he always here? He's always just so chill, always having a great time. I want to be that guy. That's what I want to do. And then I'll graduate to being a Jimmy Buffett fan um, when I get a little bit older and I'm ready to retire. You make me feel um, like I, am young. I think this is like legitimately, like in all seriousness, I legitimately think this is a great cover. Again, because they really made it their own. I think there's probably literally millions of people that have no idea uh, that this was a cover because they really turn it into their own. It sounds like a 311 song. You know, if you know the original, cool. If you don't know the original, that's cool too. It's just a great cover. And I will hear no slander of 311 under any circumstances. One of the best bands to ever do it, in my opinion, and a truly great song that I guarantee you, you can play now. You go to that beachside boomer bar, you could play it right now, and I guarantee you, all the Gen Xers would go nuts for it because it's a great song. It goes on the S tier in my opinion. That's what I think, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, fellas, I gotta warn you. Trigger warning, more ska content approaching. Trigger warning. Now, 
You might think that I'm just a Sky hater. Untrue. Untrue. I am mostly a Sky hater, but not entirely. This is Come On Eileen by Save Ferris from, uh, I don't know, 97 or something like that, 98. Cover of uh, Come On Eileen by Dexy's Midnight Runners from, I don't know, 1981 or something like that. This was their breakthrough song. I like it. I like it. And I like Save Ferris. ADD music for Gen Xers. It is very Gen X. Like everything about this is just like peak Gen X, right? Like you can imagine, uh, I don't know what I, when I think of this, I just think of like girls that wear a lot of velvet with chubby upper arms. When I think of this kind of music, that's what I think of chubby upper arms and velvet. She has a great voice. It is very Disney adult type music. I think of girls who go to burlesque shows for pit bull rescues. <laughs> too accurate. Too accurate. I like it. It is very zany. I like it. I don't think it's amazing, but I think it's solid. And uh, don't let anybody ever lie to you and gaslight you again. Don't ever let somebody tell you that I'm a ska hater because I like this song. I like this band. And I would say that this song is, uh, I don't know, a solid, um, solid C tier. That's what I think. Not amazing, but uh, it's solid. It's not an F tier. Not as good as No Doubt. Not as good as Newfound Glory, but definitely better than him. I think it's a solid C tier. I like it. Now, let's take the dark side of this bet, okay? Let's see what can go wrong when you have a... 90s Orange County ska band covering an 80s hit. We've got Take On Me by Real Big Fish. Turn the zaniness up to 9,000, and you've got this. Rough stuff, people. Warning. Trigger warning. Ska cringe incoming. Ugh. Can't do it. Ugh. Everything about this is painful. Just like... You know, this is what happens if you let the theater kids that run around in the hallways at lunch, like blurting out Monty Python quotes. If you give them a record deal, this is what happens. The problem is that this is one of their best songs too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. This is one of their best songs. So this is the, this is the upper end of Real Big Fish because the original is a great song. The original is fantastic. So like, what's the opposite of polishing a turd? like smearing poop on a bar of gold or something. This is the opposite of polishing a turd. You took something that was great and you made it a turd. With that horrible guitar tone. The local band guitar center tone. Yeah, shitting on a diamond. <laughs> this is what your uncle Spencer sends you on Facebook Messenger when he notices your black flag shirt at the family barbecue. Guys, listen, I don't understand how do ska apologists exist? Okay, how? How can anybody defend this? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to print this video out. Next time I see somebody in public wearing any kind of ska merch or, you know, anybody that just looks to me like they might be a ska apologist, I'm going to grab them by the back of the collar, be like, you want to explain this, motherfucker? I'm going to shove this in their face and be like, listen, man, I had nothing. I don't know. I don't know anything, man. I don't want any trouble. Just, I just bought an Operation IBCD once when I was 13 and I liked it. And uh, that's all I know, man. Like, all right, get the fuck out of here. I don't want to see you around here again. It's the only reasonable way to treat ska fans, ska apologists. Not good people. Not good. Anybody who's defending that cover, you are not invited to my barbecue. That's all I can say. There is no defense of that. It'd be easier for me to justify playing in a uh, National Socialist Black Metal Band than playing in a ska band that covers 80s music. This goes on the F tier people. That's what I think. I'm sorry, Ska Apologists. I had to do it to you, but I'm just speaking the truth. I call it like I see it. Okay, that does it for this edition of the Rock and Metal Tier List. Join me next time to take a look at the best and worst covers of all time, and I will see you then. Nowadays, second base is eating ass. It's true.